He helped me get her out and wanted to carry her, but I shooed him on ahead through the rain and told him to push the button. When the door opened, Wolf himself stood there. At the sight of the stranger, his colossal frame blocked the way, but when he saw me, he fell back and made room for us to enter. The stranger began. Are you a duck? Shut up, I told him. I faced Wolf and observed that he was sustaining his reputation for being impervious to startlement. I suppose you recognize Miss Duncan. She's been hit on the head. If you will please phone Doc Vollmer, I'll take her up to the south room. I made for the elevator, and when the stranger tagged along, I led him. In the south room, two flights up, we got her onto the bed and covered up. The stranger was still standing by the bed, staring down at her when Doc Vollmer arrived. After feeling her pulse and glancing under her eyelid, Doc said he thought it would be a long time till the funeral, and we wouldn't be needed for a while, so I told the stranger to come on. He left the room with me and kindly permitted me to close the door, but then announced that he was going to stay right there outside the door until the doctor had brought her to. You, I said, might as well learn to face facts. You know damn well I could throw you downstairs. If I do, you'll have to go to bed too. March. He marched, but he sure hated it. I followed him down and into the office. Wolf was there at his desk, looking imperturbable, but when he saw us, he started rubbing his chin, which meant he was boiling inside. Sit down, I told the stranger. This is Mr. Nero Wolf. What's your name? None of your damned business, he informed me. This is the most outrageous. You bet it is. When you rushed me from behind, you must have come from inside the building, didn't you? That's none of your business either. You're wrong, brother, but I'll try again. Why did you kill Arthur Tingley? He gawked at me. Are you crazy? Not a bit. Stop me if you've heard it before. I went there to get Tingley and bring him here to see Mr. Wolf. Amy Duncan was there on, sta on the stairs looking doubtful. She fell and I caught her and left her on the hall floor when I went up to investigate. Tingley was on the floor of his office with his throat cut. After a brief inspection, I returned to Amy and carried her out, and was putting her in the car when you attacked me from behind. You must have come from somewhere. Why not from inside the building? The idea appeals to me. The stranger had decided he could use a chair, and sank into one. You say, are you telling the truth? Yes, sir. Tingley, with his throat cut? Dead? Very dead. I turned to Wolf. He pretended to be going on the theory that I was kidnapping at Amy. He's all for Amy. I brought him along because I thought you might need him. Wolf was glaring at me. And why should I need him? Well, he was there. He must have come out of that building. He probably did murder Tingley. And what if he did? Oh, so that's how you feel about it. It is. I am under no obligation to catch murderers indiscriminately. Phone the police. Tell them Miss Duncan and this gentleman are here and they can... No, the stranger blurted. No, Wolf lifted a brow at him. Why not? Because it's... Good God, and, and Amy, you can't... Hold it, I commanded him. I'm doing this. I grinned at Wolf. Okay, boss, I'll call the cops. I merely thought you might like to chat with this bird first, since it seemed likely that whoever killed Tingley also put quinine in your food. Ah, Wolf murmured, that abominable... He wiggled a finger at the victim. Did you poison that liver pate? I did not. Who are you? What's your name? Cliff. Leonard Cliff. Indeed. You're a vice president of the Provisions and Beverage Corporation. Mr. Tingley himself suspected you of adultering his product. I know he did. He was wrong. So is this man wrong when he says I must have come out of that building? I wasn't inside the building at all. Where were you? I was in the driveway. There's a driveway tunnel near the door. I was in there. What were you doing there? Keeping out of the rain. Look here, Cliff said appealingly. I can't think straight. This is terrible. If Tingley has been murdered, the police have to be notified. I know that. For but God's sake, don't let them hear now with Miss Duncan. Let me get her to a hospital and get a lawyer. Wolf cut him off. What were you doing in the driveway? He shook his head. It had no connection. Phooey! Don't be a fool. If you adulterated Mr. Tingley's product or cut his throat, either or both, I advise you to get out of here at once. If you didn't, I advise you to answer my questions promptly and fully, not to mention truthfully. Well, sir? 
Archie, call police headquarters. I'll talk. I dialed the number, and when I had it, Wolf took it at his instrument. Hello, this is Nero Wolf. Write this down. Arthur Tingley, his office at his place. Wait! Cliff blurted. I'll answer your questions. He started from his chair, but I got in between him and the desk, and he subsided. Wolf continued. His place of business at 26th Street and 10th Avenue. He's there dead, murdered. Let me finish, please. My assistant, R.G. Goodwin, was there and saw him. Mr. Goodwin had to leave, but he will be here at my house later. No, I have no idea. He pushed the phone away and regarded Cliff with his eyes half-closed. You had better make it as succinct as possible. What were you doing in that driveway? Cliff was on the edge of his chair, straight, rigid, meeting his gaze. I was waiting for Miss Duncan to come out. I had followed her there. Followed? Without her knowledge? Yes. Why? Cliff's jaw worked. I had a dinner engagement with her, and she phoned me at six o'clock and broke it. The reason she gave me sounded phony, and I was... Damn it, I was jealous. I went there where she lives on Grove Street and waited across the street. When she came out, it had started to rain, and she took a taxi, and I managed to grab one and followed her. She went straight to Mr. Tingley's and dismissed her cab and went in. I did the same, but I went in the tunnel entrance and waited there. I couldn't imagine what she was doing there. What time did she arrive? A few minutes after seven. It was one minute to seven when she left her place on Grove Street. When I saw a man drive up and go in, and a little later come out carrying her and start to put her in his car, naturally I went for him. Naturally, Wolf said. Were you in the tunnel while Miss Duncan was inside? Yes, and I saw three men come and go in and leave again. Goodwin was the last one. There were two others before that. Wolf shook his head. I doubt if that's a good idea. In you in if you invent a constant stream of visitors and it develops... I'm not inventing, damn it, I saw them. Tell me about them. The first one was at 7.30. A big, gray town car stopped at the curb, and the driver got out and held an umbrella over another man and he crossed the sidewalk to the entrance. In five minutes, the man came out again and ran to the car and got in, and the car drove off. The license was GJ88. I grunted. They looked at me. Nothing, I said. Go ahead. I nearly missed seeing the second one go in because he was walking. He had on a raincoat. It was 7.40 when he entered, and he was inside seven or eight minutes. When he came out, I got a pretty good view of his face by a streetlight. He walked off to the east. Do you recognize either of the men? No, but that license number. Do you know it? No, but I can guess, on account of the GJ. I think it belongs to Guthrie Judd. It can be checked. Guthrie Judd? The banker? He calls himself a banker, yes. He's more of a promoter. He's been boosting an outfit he calls Consolidated Cereals. Recently, he's been after tingly business. He's shrewd and unscrupulous, and tough. Was it Judd who entered the building at 7.30? I couldn't tell. The driver was holding an umbrella over him. Wolf grunted. That's prudent. Should you claim to have recognized Judd, and he is able to prove... I'm telling the truth, Cliff got spirited again. I'm telling you exactly what happened. Do you think I'm a damned idiot? He stood up. I'm going upstairs. A voice behind him asked, May I come in? It was Doc Vollmer. At Wolf's nod, he entered, his bag in his hand, and spoke professionally. She'll do all right. She got a bad knock on the head, but there's no fracture. It seems to be nervous shock more than anything. After a night's rest... Is she unconscious? Cliff demanded. Cliff demanded. Oh, yes. Cliff was darting off, but the doctor grabbed his arm. Now, wait a minute. Just take it easy. Can she be moved? Wolf inquired. I wouldn't advise it. Not tonight. I want to ask her some questions. Now? Is it urgent? Fairly urgent. The police will be here pretty soon. I see. All right. I'd better go up with you. You'll have to go easy with her. We moved. Wolf headed for the elevator, and the rest of us walked up the two flights. We got there first. Amy, lying on her side, opened her eyes at us, with no indication of interest for Doc or me, but when they lit on Cliff, they opened wide, and she made a noise. 
Amy, Cliff squawked. Thank God, Amy. Volmer held him back. You, she said weakly. Were you? I don't. Take her hand, Volmer said judiciously. Hold her hand. Don't talk. Wolf came in, and Amy moved her head enough to get him in view. Hello there, she squeaked. Good evening, Miss Duncan, he said politely. Does it hurt much? Not, well, it aches. I suppose so. Can you understand words? Yes, but I don't understand. Please listen. You said nothing this afternoon of any intention to go to your uncle's place this evening, but at seven o'clock you went. Why? He phoned and asked me to come. Soon after I got home from work. What for? Did he say? He said it was something about Phil, my cousin. She went to move her head, and a little moan came out of her. He wouldn't say what it was on the phone. But when you got there, what did he say then? He didn't... Oh, take it easy now, Doc Falmer warned. I'm all right, Amy declared. I'm not going to faint again, but when I shut my eyes, I see it. The door of his office was open and the light was on, but he wasn't there. I mean, I didn't see him. I went right on in. Go ahead. That's all I remember. The next thing I remember was my head. I thought something on it was holding it down. I tried to lift myself up and then I saw him. Oh, her brow creased. I thought I saw him. My uncle. There with the blood. That's all right. Don't worry about that. What happened next? Nothing happened. I don't remember anything. Didn't you see anyone at all when you went in? Or hear anyone? No, I don't think... I'm sure I didn't. Excuse me, I said. The doorbell's ringing. If it's city employees, do I ask to see a warrant? No. Wolf scowled at me. Take them to the office. Wait a minute. Dr. Vollmer, if this young woman is in no condition to leave my house, it would be cruel and dangerous for her to undergo a police grilling, do you agree? I do. Good. Miss Duncan, when a policeman comes up here to look at you, keep your eyes closed and moan. Will you do that? Yes, but no buts. Don't overdo it, and don't speak. He moved. Come, gentlemen. 